Yeah, folks, I want to tell you, if you have a farm, a homestead, whatever, or you're about to have one, and you are not organized like I am, you are going to chase your tail a lot. <laughs> so here's a So we've used our greenhouse chicken for about two years now. And the plan, of course, was to only have the chickens overwinter in the greenhouse. And because I haven't been able to get my mobile coop built, they're still here year round. Now that it's uh, mid-November or early November, uh, no sense in moving them to a mobile coop. We're going to keep them here in the greenhouse. But this paddock or pasture area that's surrounded by our poultry netting has been pretty much plucked over. So we're going to, we're going to rotate and actually move them to the other end of the greenhouse and then try to reach this. So let me explain. So we built this greenhouse, hoop house, high tunnel, whatever you want to call it, um, a couple years ago and milled most of it. Yeah, everything but the treated base, we milled on the sawmill. We got roll down sides. The most expensive component for the entire project was the greenhouse plastic. And it's, uh, it's got a little algae buildup on it. We've got to figure out a way to clean it well. I've got a lot of overhang of trees here, so that uh, kind of builds up. But you can see, here it is. Uh, this is right at noon. It's the first week of November, so you can see sunlight is dappled due to, the, due to the trees, the overhang. Even with the leaves off the trees right now, there's quite a bit of overhang. But we built the greenhouse symmetrically. It has matching front and back doors. Uh, they're Dutch doors, so top halves open. If you want to see the details of how we built this, I'll just link to a playlist. It, it'll, it'll go through it all. But the plan has always been to have pasture access or paddock access on one end and then the other. And quite frankly, for the last year, actually for the entire time we've used this for chickens, we've just had them having access to this end. So really the entire time we've had this built, I've only had this end fenced in and had the chickens concentrated in this area. Now there's a time we were letting them free range and they were going all over the place, but a fox broke us of that pretty quickly. So we've put wood chips down where I'm standing. There's, there's a lot of composted wood chips. Obviously there's a lot of chicken manure that's turned into this. And the reason why I haven't moved them is where I'm standing is actually fill um, from, from the old creek. In fact, I'm standing in a culvert, the exit point of a culvert right here. They used to dump into the creek because the creek used to come down right to the left of the camera, turn at this culvert, and it had a really bad, really bad bank it was eating into. It turned and came right back out here and then got into the creek. So we filled in this S curve, if you will, made a straight shot all the way back and, and reclaimed this little small piece of land. So this is all filled and was pretty lousy soil. So my plan was to get them in here, wood chips, carbon, all that type of stuff. They poop, they build it up, they scratch, they do all that kind of stuff. And we get some soil built uh, to the point that even this spring, actually late summer, that was my first problem, late summer, you can see where I'm standing on these furrows. These are cornrows. I tried planting some ambrosia corn just to see if it grew. It grew, but it didn't, didn't produce any ears at that point because I think I was late and B, uh, the soil's just not quite there. So I was kind of... Kind of viewing that, I'd say, well, the reason why I didn't move them was to build soil, but it was also a little bit lazy. Uh, the fact that this creek is right here, even in the wintertime, um, it would rarely freeze. So that I wouldn't have to worry about frozen water, carrying water for the chickens, because this, this stream would create a small pool here that would stay uh, thawed out most of the time. And so it was like a water fountain for them. It always provided water, so I didn't really mess with moving it. So that was some subconscious motivation to, to leave them where they are. But now it's time. We want to move them over to the other side of the greenhouse. And then even though it's November, I'm kind of late. Um, it looks like we're going to have a warm November, December, if the weather geniuses are accurate. We're going to come back and, and sow this with a, with a winter rye, winter wheat, something like that to see if it comes in. I've, I've sown some a couple weeks ago up at the house and it's, it's done really well. So try to get some of that put in this week. So the first thing I need to do before I can move them, of course, is move the used trailer parking lot here. Looks like I'm trying to start a trailer lot. So I've got my four trailers here. Uh, one, of course, is our mobile chicken coop frame. Uh, that's a trailer frame. So we're going to move all these out of the way, and then I'll show you what we're dealing with here as far as uh, quality of soil and that kind of stuff.
All right, so we got the uh, trailer yard moved. Man, I wish I could move that fast all the time. Time lapse uh, <laughs> really is a burn for, for farmers to watch. Wouldn't it be great? Anyway, so this section of soil, this section of ground actually has the best soil out of the two areas. Uh, the reason why is this is where over the past couple years I've done a lot of chipping. Wood chips, uh, the chickens when they free range, they used to come out this way and really tear a lot of this up. This was actually some good soil at some point too. There, this isn't fill, this is the valley, this is uh, uh, sediment, all kinds of good stuff here. So uh, what I'm hoping is this winter, chickens are gonna here and just really blast this, really get it down to nothing. There's some creeping Charlie here that, uh, that the pigs love, but chickens really don't care for it. So that'll, that'll be the last thing they eat. So as they get everything else taken down, then they'll move on to the Charlie. The frost hadn't killed it yet. I've got, uh, you can see this post here. So this is fence post for the pig pasture. There's a single strand of electric down low. All these weeds have fallen over on it. I don't have the pigs on this pasture yet, so it's not active. But we'll run the uh, poultry netting right up against that, making sure we don't touch it, of course. And you can see right in the very corner of the camera, I believe, you can see a little portion of my wood chip pile sticking out. That's my huge wood chip pile. I'm not going to allow the chickens access to that. A, I don't think I have enough poultry netting to get there. B, it's composting so well that that's going to end up on the garden here in the next month or so to really do some more soil amendment up there. Uh, had a lot of green leaves and stuff in it when they chipped. So that's going to be some good stuff. So I think if, if I can get the chickens to kind of lay this to waste this winter, then this spring when it's time to plant hopefully if i can get my act together we'll have the mobile chicken coop ready the chickens will come completely out of this area all 50 or 60 whatever we have left at that point will all come out of this area into the mobile coop the mobile coop will start ranging around on our higher benches through the spring and the summer and then we can actually get something planted in here i'd like to do a bit larger crop the backyard garden is kind of kelly's uh, what they call it the fancy term is potage garden or whatever the the kitchen style garden and I'd like to do larger quantities of, uh, of crop in these two areas, maybe some corn, uh, even some potatoes. I'd love to plant some potatoes. Yeah, folks, I want to tell you, if you have a farm, a homestead, whatever, or you're about to have one, and you are not organized like I am, you are going to chase your tail a lot. <laughs> so here's a perfect example. I don't even remember putting this fence down here. It's a tiny little piece of welded, a tiny little section of crumpled up chicken wire, and then some fiberglass one-by-one -one fencing like bird netting. Yeah, obviously grown up all over behind one of my trailers. I figure what happened is what's going to happen right here. I'm going to get this out of the way to finish this project. I'm going to put it on this trailer because, you know, it's out of the way and I'll see it. And what will happen is I'll come down here in a hurry one day needing the big 16 footer and be like, oh, well, I don't want this crap on here push it off in the grass, they, I'll get that later. There you go. So, a little prize there, that, uh, that eats up weed eater string, but that's part of it, right? Okay, I think we're ready to move on. All right, so the next step is to move our net netting, and I have unplugged it before I throw my leg over here. Ooh, yeah. Um, get our little feathery friends. Where are you going, turkey? Go on, go. Oh, you, there's always one. Go, 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 chicken, go, chicken, go, chicken, go, go, there you go. All right. Everybody tucked in the greenhouse. We don't have to worry about anybody hitting the hill while we're moving fence. So the Premier One poultry netting I'm using um, is, yeah, obviously is the, Premier oh, fancy, get it. is the uh, is the best poultry netting I've found, and I don't think anyone would really argue with that too much. You know, the um, the one issue with this stuff, of course, is when you pull it tight and then you have angles or squares, 
like I do, instead of a nice round circle, then the, the poles start to bend over. Well, in this situation where I'm trying to do a big rectangle, or a U-shape, since I'm not closing in the side, then I have to uh, pull it pretty taut to get my corners. Well, that makes these entry, these starting poles bend real far so that something could slide in here. So what I've done is just taken a tiny little piece of uh, garden hose, maybe uh, it's like about seven or eight inches, and I've just made a loop that uh, goes around that pole and of course keeps it taut. You can see there when it goes to relax, it's gonna have a pretty good gap. It doesn't have to be insulative. Um, yeah, there's a chance that this bundle of wires could come in contact with it if it was a metal strap. But other than that, there's really no need for it to be insulative. The only reason why I'm using garden hose is because I just keep finding tons of it on this property. I've been here 20 years and still uncovered it. Um, the old fellow I bought this off of said his family was, uh, was full of old dirty hose, so I'm not quite sure uh, they must have been doing a lot of irrigation uh, in the family, but so I have a lot of garden hose there. And my energizer is inside underneath the nesting box, and this is the lead from it. So what we'll do, instead of rearranging the energizer, putting it in a different place, I'm just going to come out with some fiberglass posts and just run down to the other corner, getting staying right against the fence here. And it provides some extra protection in case a raccoon gets saucy and wants to try to grab somebody through the side. So I don't know if you can tell in that time lapse, but uh, there's a method to my madness in rolling this stuff up. Obviously, you're supposed to gather it in a way that it doesn't get tangled. But if you notice, I came to that back corner and stopped and then started the front and came this way. And when I put them together, just put a twist in it so I'd know exactly where that corner post should be. If this pasture or paddock area should be about the same size as that other one, which is what we're looking for, same width, the length is obviously what I'm not 100% sure of. Then I start to stretch this out on what I think roughly is my back corner. If I stretch it out to the corner of the greenhouse where the camera is sitting, then that should give me a pretty good idea to say, okay, that post needs to go here. Then that should line me out. If I just started at the front of the greenhouse and just came out arbitrarily, I could stick everything in the ground and end up short. I'd be like, oh, I got to come back and make this these corners closer. Or I could come back and wind up extra long. Now I gotta come back and pull everything up and bring it back around. So I believe using that post as a reference, the one that I had turned twisted, in theory, when I get down there, I should know, okay, here's the corner. I stretch this post here, that's this corner, and then everything else, if I if I am symmetrical, should be pretty darn close. We'll see. Let's see how this works out. I can't believe it. That actually worked. It's got one problem here with our corner though. I under, I forgot about my, uh, I've got a poplar log lying right here on this creek bank that forms kind of a, um, it's kind of a curb stop, parking stop. And that even helps sometimes if the water tries to breach this culvert, it kind of slows it down. Um, I used to have people park here when we had a lot of people over. Now that my wood chips are here, we don't, but anyway. So this log is still here and I can't, this corner, this should be moved over another four feet and that would take this slack out. So I either, either need to get the chainsaw and cut this log or just take this angle and maybe go this way with it. Okay, well the fence needs tensioning, tightening, fine tuning, whatever you want to call it. But before I do that, I want to get my hoses in place for those 
two starting leads, two starting poles. So I don't have to worry about the slack. Not having enough slack to tighten those back up. So taking our plethora of dirty old hose with my dull razor knife, I'm gonna end up sticking in my nose. <laughs> you can see that end the pigs found. Chewed the end off of that one. Okay, so that's in place. Uh, you can see there's some good spots and some bad spots. So I'm just going to come around, adjust, move out in a little bit just to tighten it up. Got a bit of a dip there, uh, such as life. This farm's full of dips. So I'll come back when we're ready to energize. That way I won't bore you with the rest of these fine details. Okay, so I've just got my wire stretched over from the uh, other side where the, where the energizer is. And I'm going to add this little alligator clip here that'll help with um, disconnecting them. I've got multiple things plugged into this extension cord, uh, one of which is a timer So for my lights. So when the boys come down to get eggs or do whatever, sometimes they unplug the wrong thing and it messes up my timer. So this will allow them to come down and do their chores without disconnecting all of my stuff. All right, so that just simply slides over there for insulation. And the plan will be to come just hook it on our clip there. All right, well, let's put a tester on it just to make sure we's hot enough. It's right at five kilovolts. I'll take that. That'll stop a possum. That'll stop a raccoon. I'll even stop a pig. All right, so let's disconnect our wire here, our hot lead. There we go. We can jump in and we'll loose the fowl. Free chicken.